What is cracking everybody? Welcome back to Calgary Barbell. We are here for another installment of Form Check Friday. This is the series where we take your user submitted videos. Anybody who emails into formcheckfriday at gmail.com is going to be a uh, potential uh, for ch being chosen to be uh, critiqued. Now we take five every week. It's a random lottery draw. We use a random number generator and we pick them apart. So we throw them up on the screen behind me. We're gonna show everybody sort of what I think we could possibly do better um, to be more efficient lifters, to lift a little bit more weight. So uh, without any further ado, we're gonna dive right in. Now this first video, I actually lost the email for, so uh, you can all blame me for that, it's my fault. Uh, but I chose these last week and was sick, so we didn't record two. Anyways, long story short, uh, I don't have much backstory for this, but this is, as far as I can tell, this guy's name is Gaming Water, and uh, this is him doing some conventional deadlifts, or at least a conventional deadlift. So let us take a look. All right, my dude, what do we got? <clears throat> All right, so this needs work, man. Let's see. So the roll in, not a bad position, but really, really loose. If we watch this slowly, as we pull in, we're taking the breath, we're dropping the hips, good position, but we start to pull here before the bars even come to a rest and watch what happens with this whole thing. We just collapse as soon as we start to pull the weight. Everything, like the body shifts back, the background's out, the shoulders specifically, if we watch from this position, the shoulders are gonna roll forward really hard. So there's a lot we're losing now. This is obviously a pretty close to max, if not max attempt lift, um, but still, like I mean, be and, and also another thing, Watch right here, when the bar comes in, it actually bounces off your shins and then ends up way out in front of you again. So a lot of uh, kind of sloppiness here. Now what I'd recommend for you to do is to get closer to this position, bring the bar in, take a second, pull the slack out of your back, find tension in your glutes and hamstrings, get back on your heels a little more and start the pull from a solid, strong position uh, where you've already kind of pulled the slack out of the bar, you've already put some tension through your body, you've already put some tension into the bar instead of this. Where, and like again, this, this is a big thing here. This bar bouncing out away from you tells me that maybe we should come up with a more static way to start the deadlift as opposed to rolling it in and literally bouncing it off the shins. Um, that's just not setting you up for a good position to finish in. Once it comes back close to your shins, you get okay, uh, like into a pretty decent position, uh, but you end up having a bit of, well, a lot of difficulty with lockout because of how sort of out of position we are here in terms of the trunk versus the hips. So we're very flexed there, which is often gonna be very characteristic of this sort of tough, exaggerated lockout of having to pull your back into extension. So let's work on the setup, let's work on creating a more stable position to pull the bar from. Like, this is good. This right here, this is okay. You know, shoulders are mostly over the bar. Um, I could still, I'd like to see these a little bit tighter. I'd like to see the butt back further and the knees a little bit more vertical. Sorry, that was a really terrible illustration of that. But instead of the shin angle being like this, I wouldn't mind seeing it more like this, if that makes sense. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna push your knees back, it's gonna put your hips back, it's gonna allow you to potentially get a little bit more extension through here, pull those lats on harder, put a little more focus on the depression of the shoulder blades, and that weight's also gonna shift a little more to the heels. And then we pull the slack out of the bar and pull, as opposed to getting this big rolling dynamic start where things are bouncing around, we're way out of position. So uh, yeah, that is what I recommend there. Hopefully that helps you, man. And I'm sorry that I lost your email. Um, I doubt that your name is Gaming Water, but uh, if it is, that's a cool name. And if not, I'm sorry I lost your email. Uh, our next one's gonna come from Joe McElroy. Uh, now Joe, Joe has a three sets total here. He's got 70% 70, 70 by three, 80% by three, and 90% by three. So we're gonna try to uh, skip through to the top set and let's see scrolls by this will be the first set second set third set yeah all right 
So third set here. Start position looks pretty okay. Uh, a bit of a tough camera angle to really see much once you start. Like this to me looks really good. We've got a nice neutral back angle. The shins are probably pretty vertical. Um, the, the angles and everything here, the shoulders, you can see they sink down uh, as he starts to pull here. So right here, we've got a bit of elevation in the shoulders, but watch what happens as he begins. You can see those shoulders sink down tight into the trunk and things look pretty good. So let's see the rest of these reps. And especially for a 90% triple, like this is, I think I only got, I only saw two reps there, bro. 90% double. Doth my eyes deceive me? That's one rep. That's two reps. No, oh, there's three reps. What happened the first time? How many did you guys count? Am I going crazy? All right, yeah. And especially for a 90% triple, like that's really good, man. Really, really good in terms of how you're holding position. There's patience. He's starting with the push off the floor. We can see that the bar has a, a relatively straight bar path. And again, I don't think bar path is the be all end all, but it can help us make sense of what's happening with the rest of the body. So the bar pretty well, you know, maybe a little bit back into him. Uh, he's back on his heels pretty well. So the bar is maybe starting a little bit out in front of you just judging by how the bar comes back into you. Um, again, this is kind of all we can see from this angle, um, but it looks like the bar's traveling back into you to start, so I would probably start it a little bit closer um, so it's a little more straight up, but all in all, positioning mechanics look really good. So uh, honestly, and unfortunately for you, uh, I don't really have much for you. I think any further nitpicking past a certain point is not going to help and I think that your technique is sufficient, it's checking all the boxes, uh, it's efficient and I think you should just keep practicing what you're doing. So that is my advice. What we're going to do is we're going to go on to Avery Marison here. Avery. Uh, no no context, no real info in the email, uh, but we're going to take a look. Looks like some deadlifts. And let's talk about this. Again, just a single. Let's see. So that, I mean, the start position is decent. This is okay, right? We got everything kind of in line there, but watch how much that start position shifts before that bar comes up off the floor. We're clearly not tight here, right? So we're in a decent position, but we're not tight here. We're not tight in the glutes. We're not tight in the hamstrings or quads. Because if we were, we wouldn't see this big shift off the floor. So that would be the first thing I would try to learn to minimize is keep all this locked in. And as you pull in, we actually just did a video about this the other day because I talk about this all the time on Form Check Friday. We got to learn to pull the slack out of the bar. See how lax the bar is here. And this is a deadlift bar, it looks like. But see how gen generally lax this bar is? Um, like it's, it's not being pulled and there how much flex that bar has. So if we watch just right here, watch that bar here, not pulling on the bar, here, pulling on the bar. So we want this much flex out of the bar, but with this position, if that makes sense. And then that way we can start with a push, we can keep the bar a little bit better in line, get away from the stiff-legged position. Um, Cause right now, like your knees are almost straight and you're having to stiff leg this up. Boom. So obviously you got it. Obviously it was close to a maximal lift. Um, but what I recommend is trying to pull in tension into that position. Wedge yourself against the bar. Find a way to kind of pull your hips into position instead of just sitting them down. <clears throat> and then practice that. Um, a lot of times we can make these technical adjustments, but if we can't practice it to the point where it becomes part of the technique, it becomes efficient, then we're not gonna be able to make these changes over time. So um, I think that's probably the big thing there is to, to practice it with, you know, 70 and 80% weights, those weights where we're gonna get training stimulus in, but uh, it's light enough that you can kind of practice with perfect technique. So I think that, uh, you know, again, I feel like a lot of times when people send in singles, it makes it a little bit tough. 
Um, because it's like, yeah, a bunch of stuff went wrong, but maybe this was a 40 pound PR or a 20 kilo PR. Like if that's the case, then sweet. I'm just glad you lifted it. Cause at the end of the day, that's what we're here for. We're here to lift more weight. That's the whole name of the sport. So I think that, uh, singles can be a little bit confounding sometimes. Like maybe your technique looks way better on 90% of your working weights. But like I said, this is a huge PR or something. So a little bit hard to tell, but uh, hey, sometimes that's how the, the cookie crumbles. That's how we get, that's sometimes how we get submissions. So um, next one comes from Michael Zhu. Uh, and I think I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. It's just XU. Uh, huge fan, appreciate your FC form check videos a lot. Uh, two years into powerlifting, looking to compete at the end of this year or early next year. I've been doing conventional for the most part and find it easier to keep a better form. I've tried sumo several times and I'm able to lift a lot more, but I just feel like the form is not there. Awesome, just wanted to reach out for feedback on my conventional deadlift uh, and see if there's anything I can do to increase my strength. Let us take a look. All right, Michael, what do we got, dude? What do we got? So relatively long torso, relatively short femurs. <clears throat> At least like the video is kind of weirdly compressed um, in terms of like the proportions, the aspect ratio maybe, but. <clears throat> so this actually looks to me and you guys can, can confirm on this. I often am going to tell people um, that I want them further back on their heels, that I want their butt further back. I want everything further back behind the bar. In this case, I actually want you further over the bar. Uh, I think a little bit more pressure through the forefoot is going to help you in this sort of initial phase of the range of motion off the floor. So I would actually let your knees come forward a little bit and let your body forward over the bar a little bit more so we can get a little more quad drive off the floor. Um, Cause it looks really kind of like sticky off the floor. And I think we're pulling back too far behind ourselves, behind the bar. Cause yeah, oh, I, I missed the pause. I missed the crucial timed pause there. So right when we start this lift, like we're actually a little bit behind the bar. And ideally we kind of want that shoulder blade to be like right above the bar. So we're in like a pretty much a vertical line. Um, <clears throat> but what we're seeing here is that you're actually a little bit further behind the bar and the bars, sorry, I can't draw with the mouse very well. Um, but the bar is a little bit out in front, which I think is making this initial sort of push off the floor a little bit tougher than it otherwise would be. So just watch kind of how sticky it is off the floor. And then once it's past the knees, boom. So, Let's get you a little bit more on your forefoot. I want you to think and cue your big toe a little bit more. Make sure there's pressure in that big toe. Uh, it's gonna bring you a little bit forward over the bar a little bit more. Uh, and I think that's gonna be okay. You have this good strong back position. Uh, I'm not too worried about that coming into play. So I think that's the big thing there. Give that a shot. Let me know how it goes. All righty. Uh, Steve Link is our last one here and uh, Steve Link's doing some benching. He said he's 42.75 years old, very specific. Body weight is 84 kilos. His best in comp is 105. So he's a new power lifter, old school bencher that didn't ever know or learn about form till recently. Developing AC joint pain recently, diagnosed with AC joint arthritis and scapular dyskinesis. Um, I would recommend, first off, checking out, uh, there was some content, I believe a video, that uh, Barbell Medicine did on scapular dyskinesis and some of those other scapular dysfunctions. So I would go check that out and see what those guys have to say. I learned a lot about my injury uh, and how to kind of come back from that and, and some of the current research on injury and pain and what that says uh, and how to, how to look at that and approach that as a strength athlete. So definitely go check that out. Uh, this video is 195 pounds or 88 kilos for four. Uh, his concerns, setup order and routine, grip width, elbow position, bar path, and mostly scapular position and losing tightness at lockout and in between reps. So a lot, there's a lot of things that Steve's thinking about here. So <clears throat> in some cases we can actually get a little bit over um, concerned with technique. So let's see what Steve's up to here. So first off, this unrack is a little bit tough. 
Um, these are quite big. So it's forcing you to, if we watch your shoulder position, you're in a pretty good position to start. And then in order to unrack, we actually have to protract. We have to kind of come forward out of position to get that bar out of the rack. So I would maybe move to the lower ones, the lower setting, uh, and you know, make yourself do a little bit more of a press to get it out, but be able to go to, to use just elbow extension, right? So that you're not having to protract the shoulder blade. Elbow extension, bring it out, and you're able to maintain that nice tightness in the upper back. So that could be something that's, that's having an impact um, you know, right off the hop. So we get the bar out. Things look pretty good there. One thing that uh, I might look at a little bit here uh, is it looks like we're a little bit over tucked. Now, I like the position in the shoulder blade. Just imagine his elbow's not there for a second. Now the shoulder blade is nice and depressed. We can tell that by the elevation of the rib cage. We've got a decent arch here. Um, so those are all good things. But one thing that happens when we really kind of tighten the upper back in that way and we get a lot of external rotation at the shoulder joint is we tend to follow suit with the humerus and we bring that elbow too far in, which causes this. So the elbow is actually in front of the bar. Um, and for anybody watching this who's gonna submit bench videos, a great angle would be straight side. So I can see the bar in relation to the elbows. Because I would wager on this rep right here, we've got our wrists and our hand here, and the elbow is too far in front. Now whether or not that has anything to do with your AC joint um, or, or pain experiences, it's tough to say. Adjusting that might make a difference in your pain experience. Um, so I would I would look at you know trying that out. So what we want, and I'll just kind of make myself bigger here for a second so I can show everybody. I might get a little bit out of focus, but I'm wearing a black hoodie. Hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate exactly what I mean by this, and this is maybe a bit unconventional for our form check Fridays, but hey, you know, we're here to learn. So. Um, what we're gonna do a lot of times, we tighten the back like this, see we get that external rotation, we get that sort of depression and retraction in the scapula. A lot of times what happens is then the elbows come in too far because it's just continuing this rotation, right? So what we want is we want this rotation here, but we want to allow the elbows to stay out under the bar. We don't want them tucked down in here because then the elbow is in front of the bar and we end up just kind of in a weird position where we're having to come way back out um, and, and putting a lot of like external rotation demand on the shoulder that in some cases may influence a pain experience. Um, so what I recommend is allow your elbows to track out a little further without adjusting the shoulders. So don't go shoulders out and elbows out like this. Keep those shoulders tucked down hard and then bring those elbows out towards the outsides of your body just a little bit. So hopefully that makes sense and hopefully everybody can kind of see what I'm talking about. So <clears throat> on the way down, I want everybody just to watch the elbows, watch how they track really far in. And then especially on that last rep there, if we can just go back to it, watch how far the elbows flare as he starts to press right here. Those elbows really had a lot of adjusting to do to get back. Now we do definitely want, usually want to see a little bit of tuck and a little bit of flare sort of on the concentric, or sorry, eccentric and concentric respectively. But I think in this case, it's probably a bit much. And with that, we might be able to move the grip width out a little bit. Um, which, I mean, obviously you've got relatively long arms here. The wider you can move that grip out, the less extension we're gonna have to go through, the less shoulder extension we're gonna have to go through to get that bar to the chest. So, another thing to look at there would be a bit wider position. Losing tightness at lockout, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little, but I think that's a result of trying to be so in here and this being the tight feeling, so that when you get out to here, and back to like locking out, then we're losing it all. So if you set yourself up to be a little tighter, 
with the elbows a little more pointed out, you're probably gonna be able to maintain that as the elbows flare through the end. So that was uh, pretty in depth on that last little bench video there. But hopefully everybody kind of understands what I mean and uh, can kind of put it together, see what they mean, film your benches from the side, see if you're leading the bar too much. I mean, generally speaking, we wanna have like a little bit, like that much, but if we're here on the way down, then you're probably not being as efficient as you could be. Um, that is it. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, if you want to submit for Form Check Friday, go ahead and send your emails to formcheckfriday at gmail.com. Every Friday we have a live stream on our YouTube where we take form checks, we do Q&A. Dylan and I sit here and drink coffee and have a good time with a bunch of you fun people. As well, one last little plug, the classic launch is live. So we have these, we got the thick hats, the Equip Brews tired shirts are back. Uh, we made some fanny packs, we have men's and women's fits, and it's only $10 Canadian worldwide shipping. So go ahead and check that out at calgarybarbell.com slash apparel. Leave a like if you liked it, hit that subscribe button. Let me know if you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video. I would love to have a further discussion and we'll see y'all in the next one.